Handle Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents New England's favorite bowling show. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Campbellpin Stars and Strikes. And now your host, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. and welcome in to another edition of Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNBS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Moore. It's the Tournament of Champions, and over the course of the next five weeks, six of our latter winners will be competing for the ultimate championship for the 2004 season. And it's been a very exciting last couple of weeks. Gary Carrington really made a great rush after being on three consecutive ladders. He finally found himself a spot in the number two seed, so we'll see him in about another month or so. All right, let's meet our first two bowlers in our Tournament of Champions first. Our number six seed from Kingston, Massachusetts. He had a 349 to earn his spot in the Tournament of Champions. John Winchell from Kingston, Massachusetts. John Winchell, average 130. High single 187, a brand new high triple of 467. John does his bowling at Exeter Lanes, Leo's Super Bowl in Amesbury, and some bowling at Park Place in Windham. I said Kingston Massey's Kingston, New Hampshire, of course, and up to the number five seed we go with a 401 triple in his ladder series championship match. Dave Hodge from Methuen, Massachusetts. Dave Hodge averaging 126, his high single 183, triple 470. And Dave does his bowling at Academy Lanes in Breath. You're going to see the best Candlepin bowlers in the world over the course of the next five weeks competing in our Tournament of Champions. Let's get right to this afternoon's match with John Winchell and Dave Hodge when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. It's the Tournament of Champions on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Six of the finest bowlers in the world. There you see the seedings. John Winchell, Dave Hodge, Rich Lottie, Jeff Surrett, Gary Carrington, and top seed Sean Baker. All vying for that ultimate prize, the championship of the TOC. And we begin this afternoon. John Winchell from Kingston, New Hampshire, will be first to bowl here at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, and we are thrilled that you are with us for our final series of the season, and we're getting underway. John Winchell in the head pin starts with a strike. Nice smooth delivery by John Winchell. And a very fitting start to the Tournament of Champions, the biggest money ladder of the year. Six bowlers instead of five because we had six ladder series to determine these seedings. And then you come crashing back to earth after a big strike. Right through the middle. Put just four in the strike. John averages 130, a high single 187, high triple now 467. And he'll have to settle for a seven box. Dave Hodge. We'll get to lots of emails and letters that we received since our last taping. We'll try to cover them all over the course of the next five weeks. And we're going to find out who won the big grudge match from Pilgrim Lanes. We'll begin showing you uh, two boxes over the next five weeks till we eventually get the entire ten frames in. You find out if it was Dick or if it was me. Dave Hodge from the Thuin, a 126 average, a high single 183, high triple 470. Won his ladder series championship match with a 410. And the number five seed. With a 401, I should say. Oh, my. Didn't want that pin to fall. Just barely got a piece of the head pin on the Brooklyn side and didn't get much to show for it. Half the rack is down. Give it a good run. Dave's a recent graduate from Suffolk University with a business degree. He's divested it. 
next in the Melrose Bowl and the Gloucester Bowl, and he works the front desk at the Marriott Long Wharf in Boston, which should be a busy place with the political convention. The Democratic convention coming to Boston this summer. So it's going to be closing 93, I guess, through parts of Boston, and uh, a lot of folks are taking that week as a vacation who work in the city so as to avoid it. Now I see that John Winchell's wife is here. This is the 6th of April as we tape this. They were expecting their first child, Dick, on April 4th. So uh, there's a possibility that you have your latex gloves and some hot towels. <laughs> you may have to play Dr. Dick here a little later on today, deliver a child. I don't even play a doctor on television. <laughs> You're one of the few. <laughs> Ten bucks for John. John's a roofer for Rain Check Roofing in Kingston, New Hampshire. Nice shot right in the one-three pocket, his second strike of the match. He has a nice, smooth delivery. Two strikes and four boxes for John Mitchell and now Dave Hodge. Dave's right in the pocket on that one. Dave has a little left to right action on his ball as it heads down the lane. We had a call at the station uh, this week. I want to acknowledge right off the bat a call about a faithful viewer of the bowling show. She just turned 100 years old. Could we wish a happy birthday to B. Swan? B. Happy birthday. And Why don't you sing to her, Dick? Thanks for watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And from what I understand, be the first hundred of the hardest. <laughs> it gets easier from here. That's awesome. Happy birthday and many, many more. And continued good health. Dave Hodge, there's a mark. So he breaks the ice and finally gets into marked territory after missing a single pin just a moment ago. Still a very close match. Only four pins separate these bowlers, although John Winchell with a slight advantage. He's on a strike versus Dave Hodge's spare. John right in the pocket again. He's locked in on that head pin, he seems. Never too early to talk about the triple strike jackpot. $625 if one of our bowlers can get a three-bagger today. Right on top. Spare inside the strike. John Looking for bonus money here. John Winchell is the only bowler to have not had 400 to get into the Tournament of Champions. I did a little research. And there's a strike. $50 in bonus money. You see it again. Two of the ladders this year were very low scoring, Dick, and then the other four were very high scoring, and uh, he won his tournament of champion, or his uh, ladder with 349 during one of the low scoring segments. So tough to say how it can be so radically different sometimes from month to month as we take, but that was the case this year. Fair inside a strike for Dave Hodge. So the bullers warm up here in the first string. Sad note to pass along to Candlepin viewers. As we were notified of the passing of one of Fitchburg's bowling greats, Ray Casey passed away in his sleep March 19th. At the age of 77, Ray owned and operated the New Palace Lanes for the past 31 years and was a champion bowler on Channel 5 on many occasions. He was, in fact, the first person to ever have three strikes in a row. Ray was, Ray was a great guy and uh, will be missed. That was sent to us by Bob Kozlowski, a regular viewer of our show from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Bob, thanks very much. I happened to catch it in the paper when it, when it ran, but... Uh, I appreciate your note to remind us of the passing of one of Candleton Bowling's greats over the years, Ray Casey of Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Another one. Wow, is he on fire. Four marks in a row, that's... $75 in bonus money, but more importantly, he's got a shot at how much, Michael? $625. $625 on this shot right here. Right in the pocket. Will it go? Yes, it will. The triple strike for $625 for John Winchell. 
right off the bat in our first match of the Tournament of Champions. And we'll That's give him 500 more. Right, we'll give him 500 more if he gets another one. Dave Hodge trying to stay alive. He throws a good first ball. Will he break up the split? Yes, he will. But he's suddenly in a big hole since John Winchell is on five marks. The last three are strikes. Boy, those pins add up quickly. That's three marks in a row for Dave Hodge at $50. Actually, it is not. He had an open in the sixth frame. I missed one. All right. But he can start a new string right here with his first one. Boy, he's caught in the head pin nicely. Continues to leave single pins. This one very makeable. Some wood leaning against the seven pin. $500 shot right here. Missed the entry that time. Tries to get it back door. Sean Baker, the only bowler in our seven years of uh, doing this show with a four-bagger. He did it uh, pretty recently, actually. Missed the head pin. Will he catch it on the rebound? No, he'll be open. So he's got six and a quarter plus <clears throat> for five marks in a row. Yep. <laughs> Sitting at 157 after nine frames for John Winchell. And a great start in the first week of our five-week Tournament of Champions event. Right on the head pin, looking for it to start another run. Just needs three pins for a 170 bit. What a start to the Tournament of Champions. Needing to re rack the pins. Only three went down. And now we've got a full 10. You didn't see that on camera, but only three pins came down with the new set. They painted the ball tubes on the racks. We'll show you that. It's an eight box, an eight in the spare, and a 175. Now the rack's stuck on lane 33, and it's coming down. That'll be a 175 for a string for John Winchell. Dave Hodge trying to stay in the match. She's working on a couple of marks. Put seven in his spare. Missed the spare. That's one he could have had. And a nine box. One fourteen through nine for Dave Hodge on the head pin, but he left a tough shot. So he will be trailing by a considerable margin after one. He'd like to make this shot. He's got some wood that could help spray the pins. Look at that shot. Wow. What a great spare by Dave Hodge in the tenth box. He's a one twenty four plus a ball. Great shot by Dave Hodge. You saw it again. It's one of the most beautiful split shots I've ever seen. He cut it perfectly. Oh, man. That'll keep him charged up, although he's got a long way to go next game. That one down onto the head pin. Put six in the spare and a one. For Dave Hodge. A 45-pin lead for John Winchell over Dave Hodge after one. We're coming back for number two right after this on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Well, displaying that we have no shame at all at the annual Rock and Bowl at Pilgrim Lanes, Mike and I went into our annual grudge match. Yeah. Helping raise money for the kids who just recently competed in the Atlantic Coast Junior Classic. 
in Canada, and so we helped raise a little bit of money that day by basically embarrassing ourselves publicly. That was a 10 box, not a spare. Don't get too carried away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets for me. <laughs> Here's Mr. Dick Lutz from the port side. That was a 10 box, too. That was uh, not a spare. That yeah. was a 10. So we don't get too worked up about stuff yeah, like that. That's right. And a seven. So we're tied at 17 after two boxes. <laughs> we'll show you two boxes a week, and then we'll get ready go. to go. And we'll head down the home stretch. 17-17 after two boxes. Now back to our match here. Dave Hodge will bowl first in the second string. Trailing by 45 pins. So 175 for John Winchell to Dave Hodge's 130. Congratulations to the, uh, the kids who bowled in Canada from Pilgrim Lanes in the Atlantic Coast Junior Classic. The girls winning eight out of 48 possible awards. The boys, listen to this, 28 out of 96. The Pilgrim Lanes team pretty much swept 30% of all possible bowling awards back in March, March 27th. Congratulations to the ICYBA kids, the boys and girls, from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, Mass. And before you start sending the emails or the uh, letters, cards and letters, we understand that during the first string, we were having a difficult time getting a score on the, on the screen uh, after each box. As a matter of fact, you didn't see the score after each box like you normally do. You will this string. It's been corrected. And we apologize for that during the course of the first string. We were seeing it here, but you weren't seeing it at home. So that's why we were not uh, commenting about the fact that you were not seeing it. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't corrected until now. So you'll be able to see the scores after each boxes, and uh, you'll be up to date during the course of the match. John Winchell, a terrific 175 in the first ring, including the $625 triple strike jackpot. Well, apparently the big game didn't put his wife, uh, Sally, into labor. She's still here. Man, oh man, are we ready for that? Do we have a contingency plan? We're boiling towels in the back room <laughs> as, as we speak. John starts out with a nine box. I don't know that I could deliver a child, to be honest with you. Well. I've done some wacky stuff in my 33 years in radio, but that ain't one of them. And congratulations to you as the uh, voice of the Manchester Wolves in the uh, Arena Football League 2. Well, as we tape this, we've played one game, and it was in Moline, Illinois, and the, the Wolves were beaten in their first match. And as you're watching this, the Wolves will have played another one perhaps even two, and uh, hopefully the results will be different. Well, they played the, uh, I understand, the top. Oh, the big shot. Wow, John Winchell, a big shot. Watch this shot right on the head pin. Great ricochet off the wall, and there go the dominoes. Two sensational split conversions by the bowlers here in the early going of the Tournament of Champions. Now Dave with a little bit of a split here. A one, two, seven on the left, the ten in the right corner. Some wood to help out. Good shot. There it is. Amazing. Dave Hodge with a big spare. Watch it again. He put it right in the one, two pocket. Look at the one. Go take out the ten. The ball takes out the two and the seven. Great shot. On the spare. Trying to fill that mark. He's got another opportunity here. Puts eight in the spare. Very makeable spare here. It's the two and the five with some wood right between the two pins. And there it is. Three marks and four boxes for Dave Hodge as he tries to climb back into it. Going to keep John Winchell honest here as he breathes down his back. He had a 45-pin deficit to overcome after the first game. Just six in the mark for John Winchell, the four horsemen right side. No wood to help out. Just a clean shot. There it is. They're, they're making shots, aren't they? Not leaving much on the deck today, that's for sure, and making some difficult spares. This one is, yeah, I mean, it looks easy because there's no gaps, but if you don't hit that just right, there's only a couple ways to make that spare, and he got probably the preferred way, the inside shot. Perfectly placed. That's a good pocket shot right there. Break up the split. John was rooting for it. 
Well, the runner-up today is going to get a uh, check for $250. The winner goes on to bowl Rich Lottie in week two of our five-week Tournament of Champions series. Spare for John Winchell. We go to the break. Both bowlers working on marks as we to come back. Ashwood, New Hampshire, for Candlepin Pit Stars and Strikes, the Tournament of Champions on WNBS TV. Dave Hodge ready to bowl on lane 34. He's working on two marks in a row. Looking for three, looking for some bonus money. He has three marks and four boxes, as does John Winchell's. Winchell's were back to back to back. Is a mark for Dave Hodge, and he breaks into the bonus money category. Personable young man, graduated from Suffolk University with a business degree, recently left bowling business as a uh, co-proprietor at Melrose Bowl in Gloucester Bowl. Now works, as you mentioned, at the Marriott Long Wharf in Boston. Oh, good first ball, and he's trying to root one of those pins down to break, to break up the split. Can't do it, but he's got some wood there. Mom Lillian is here, and he uh, said, it's okay that you announce that I am single and looking. So, ladies, missed. Dave Hodge is back on the market. And a 10 box. Well, he's not left a pin all day. Four spares and two opens, or two 10 boxes, to be more exact. John working on a spare. He's got three marks in a row. This time he puts seven in the spare. He's been making this kind of shot all afternoon. This time he picks the head pin. Spent some of his childhood in Waterloo, Iowa. A hotbed of Candlepin bowling. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Got a note from Diane Galuccio of Peabody, Massachusetts. This past week, I lost my 89-year-old grandmother. She was an avid watcher of the show and the Channel 5 show. Even when the, she finally ventured to Maine last summer, she watched the show, if at all possible. She never missed a show, especially the ones with the boulders from Lynn. She sadly missed by all her children, four with three surviving her eight grandchildren, of which I am the eldest and a former bowler. Nineteen great-grandchildren and one and a half great-great-children. There's one on the way. Oh she would have turned 90 on May 31st. She was a kind and compassionate person. Just thought I'd let you guys know that she was an avid watcher, even the reruns, and she loved the show. Her name was Helen Newman of Lynn, Massachusetts. That note from Diane Galuccio of Peabody. Thank you, Diane. Appreciate all the information you send us about loved ones, the history of bowling, as we get a lot of interesting anecdotes from people who've been around the game a lot longer than Dick and I have. I know that's hard to believe anybody could be, but that you're out there. Dave, Still, go ahead, Mike. I, I was going to say, in progress, as you watch this on Easter Sunday, we should mention the Easter Sunday Singles Classic is going on at Lita Lanes. Of course, this show is pre-recorded. There's no... No, uh, you know, secret to that. They began at noon today with some of the best bowlers, a $5,000 top prize. If you're in the area, should be going on for a little while yet after the show, I would think. Come by and sneak a peek at a lot of the guys you watch every week on Stars and Strikes. Nine box for Dave Hodge. He's at 101. It's a good ball and a strike for Dave Hodge. He buried it that time in the 1-2 pocket. His left to right ball right in the 1-2 pocket that time. Fourth mark, fifth mark of the string for Dave Hodge. John a little full on the head pin that time. Puts just five in his spare. Pins aren't falling quite as easily as they did last string when he put three strikes together and won $625 in that plus the additional bonus money for having five marks in a row. That was a question we had from a viewer a while back. If a bowler gets the triple strike jackpot, does he still get the extra money for having three marks in a row or additional marks in a row? The answer is yes. Absolutely. 
we never really address that because it's just so incredible that they get three strikes. But yes, that's always been the case. Right through the oh. middle of the spread eagle plus one. Well, a chance now for Dave Hodge to chip away because he's working on a strike and this will certainly, well, probably not be a spare. Probably about We've seen a, it made. Oh, absolutely. Not an easy one. I'd love that he'd make a liar out of me, but that's not the case. So, so he will be open. Dave Hodge is working on getting almost half that pinfall back if he can put a mark on his eighth frame strike. And that'll be a nine box. 103 for John Winchell. Dave Hodge is at 111 plus a couple of balls. As we do every year, Dick, I go through and compile some interesting stats over the course of the season. We'll share some of those for folks as we get into the third string. Dave looking for another mark. Bounced it down, but he got the spare. So Dave Hodge is doing some damage here in the second string. Well, he's picked up 18 of the 45 pins that he was down. Making things interesting. That time he threw it past the head pin, but he got some pretty good action and put seven in the spare. So a good second string for Dave Hodge. And 130, his first string wasn't too nope. shabby either over his average. Missed the spare. He threw a good oh, ball. Oh, boy. A little disappointed at the result. And a 10 box and a 148 second string for Dave Hodge. Great second string. Good first ball by John Winchell and a strike. John is back, his first strike this game in the ninth frame. Four in the eighth, the last to go. So John trying to maintain that momentum. Another good first ball, a nine pin drop. So he responds. It's $500 in the newly reset triple strike jackpot. Next week goes to 525. Spare in the tent. So he won't give back much of his lead. No, he won't. Out. Four or five pins, maybe. Dave Hodge looking at about a 40 pin deficit now to make up in just 10 boxes remaining, or he'll be going home and. John Winch will advance to Bull Rich Lottie next week, if that's the case. Just five in the mark. 138. A 35-pin lead for John Winchell going to string number three over Dave Hodge. We're coming right back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS-TV. John Winchell will start the third string with a 35-pin lead over Dave Hodge. As we welcome you back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. Our program director today is Kevin LaFon. Sean Holman is on replay. Alex Kalistoff's on audio. Keith Webb's our engineer. Eric Anger and Nick Blanchett and Joe Began, our camera crew, working it at Lita Lanes, making it possible for you to watch the finest Candlepin bowlers in the world on the Tournament of Champions on WNDS-TV. And old friend Bill Muldoon has returned from Florida to be in the audience today. Bill was waiting at the door when we came in to say hello. Moved to Florida last year. First time back. We're glad to have him in the audience. And we get a lot of emails and inquiries about uh, Irene McGowan, longtime regular at our tapings, and she was unable to make it again today for the Tournament of Champions, a lady who you would all recognize if you look back at tapes of Candle and Stars and Strikes. A lovely white-haired lady who sits in the front row not able to make it today, hopes to be back with us in the fall. She sends her best. 
10 box for John. A pair of tens to start out. Yeah, how about a little uh, look back here in the last season, 2003 2004? Total number of pins knocked down by our bowlers 18,504, which is 148 pins more than went down last year, Dick. The average per game this year is up a pin to 128.5. So our bowlers averaging 128.5. And the average score of our latter winners, in other words, the six bowlers, they averaged 135.5 to win their ladders and to be in the Tournament of Champions. And that is up 1.12 pins from last season. So scoring overall is up. Four out of the six ladders are very high scoring and two are fairly low. Got a note that says, first, I just wanted to let you know that we love the show. I've been watching for 15 years and haven't missed one yet. As a matter of fact, my husband's been deployed, and I'm taping each series and sending them over to him so that he won't miss them while he's away. So we're being watched overseas, Mike. Uh, That's from Diane and Mike to catch of Manchester, New Hampshire. Thank you very much. And Godspeed to your loved one overseas, wherever he or she may be. The uh, tapes of the show get sent uh, all over the, the globe, Dick. You can't get candle pin bowling anywhere, you know. Do they have your permission to do that? They don't. Mm -hmm. Nor of Major League Baseball, so. John Winchell on lane 34, right in the pocket. The four pin denies him. Block piece of wood got in the way, got the uh, tip of it, and redirected the ball. So the four pin remains, and at best he can have three ten boxes in a row here. Got a note from Patrick Capri of Rochester, New Hampshire. This is uh, after Mike Poulin's appearance on the show. I bowled against him the other night at Bolarama in Portsmouth. He beat me by about 100 pins, but the reason I'm emailing is I saw him do something that was just amazing. He had the spread eagle four times in a row on his last <laughs> half of the last game. Now, that alone wouldn't be amazing, but the fact that he made the first three in a row, all of which Stop had it. no wood, I just had to sit and watch in awe. That's from Patrick Capri of Rochester. He made three spread eagles in, in a row. row? That's what he says. That's what it says right here. Oh, my. Make a note that next time you know, Poulin's on the we'll show, ask him about that we're going to give him the uh, sodium pentothal to see if that's the truth. I, not that he's not capable of doing it. Nice shot by John Winchell. A little more careful on that shot. He didn't want that wood to ricochet the ball away like the last one did. First mark of the string for John. Dave Hodge needs to mark. Threw a good first ball. He needs to put a few marks back to back to back. Here's an opportunity. A shot by Dave Hodge, the two and the five. He was part of the 2002 team in the World Tournament in Bangor. Matt Dennehy was one of his teammates. Steve Vadney, many-time performer on the show. Also, Eric Young, John Zappi, and Sam D'Agostino, bowlers on his team in the 2002 World Tournament. Tough that, miss for that Dave hurts. that time. That's when he needed. The nine box, and we're going to go to the break. The lead is 29, plus a ball for John Winchell as we come back to Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire, right after this. John Winchell ready to go on lane 34. At Lita Lanes, he has a 29-pin a lead, plus whatever he gets on this ball in the third string. He gets a lot on the ball, doesn't he? Wow. He was the uh, number 29-ranked bowler in the WCBC in the 2002 and 03 season. Certainly a bowler to watch. He's on his way up. This is only his third time on WNDS. That's not going to count. That's going to be a nine yeah. box. That one caught the dead wood in the gutter before it caught the seven pin. So he loses out on the spare, loses out on the pin, takes a nine box and moves on. Now the rule is if the, uh, if the ball hits the standing pin and the pin in the gutter at exactly the same time, then it would count. 
And who's going to be the judge of that? The bowler himself, The right? bowler himself, that yep. is correct. The bowlers are very, very good at self-policing. They don't ever want to take a cheap shot. And that's what I love about Candlepin bowlers is they often will even go against themselves just so as to not to appear dishonest. Here's a mark right there. So he could have had three in a row were it not for that pin in the gutter. Now Dave Hodge needs to mark to stay alive. So you think you're a Candlepin bowling historian, Michael, huh? There's Dave Hodge with a good first ball. Well, Look at this. I can only go back about 20 years because I moved here, you know, in 1984, so. This isn't too far back, but this is from Kurt Lebeck and Deerfield, who writes us often. And that pin fell off the deck, and that's not what Dave wanted to have happen. Tough shot here. Tried to bank it off the wall. Kurt writes, I found out that Gary Carrington got a 420 and lost today to Sean Baker's 451. Five weeks ago, Carrington had 421 and lost to Jeff Surratt's 438. But 421 is not the highest losing score ever on TV. On January 2nd, 1993, in the old Channel 5 show, Brian McKinley had a 425 and lost to Jeff Atkins 440. So five weeks ago, Gary missed the record by four pins and then five pins later on. So <laughs> Kurt Levesque, thanks very much. Appreciate that. Gary Carrington was persistent, though. Three ladders in a row until he finally found himself a spot in the Tournament of Champions as the number two seed. It'll be another open frame for young Dave Hodge. And he can ill afford open frames. And he is running out of frames, let's put it that way. John Winchell can really kind of put the icing on the cake with a couple of marks right here. Working on a spare. Will that seven pin fall? It will not. It continues to wobble. So he puts seven in the mark. Dick, we have $70 in the bonus ball competition at the conclusion of today's match for a home viewer. Great crowd on hand. Look at the crowd as they continue to come in on the first match of our taping of the Tournament of Champions. Ten box for John Winchell. Again, another split. Oh, look at that shot by John Winchell. How about that? You'll never see that spare Watch me it that again. way again. The two, seven, eight and ten. Wow. Dave Hodge for his effort, a spread eagle. Demoralizing leave after that amazing spare from Mr. Winchell. Nine box for Dave Hodge. Nines are no good. He needs to run the table. And even then, it better be strikes. Yep. And he's throwing good first balls, but he's not getting breaks at all. This is the 310. He's going to be close to, you know, 390, 400 today, and uh, doesn't look like he's going to win this one. Missed the spare. Another open. That's five open frames in a row. Just one mark in the string for Dave Hodge. Sean Winchell already at 408 plus a ball. Hodge is at 362. And on the brink of mathematical extinction. Winchell working on a mark. And another one. And that'll do it. Cannot be beaten. John has really been on the head pin. The five pin a little reluctant, but finally coaxed over. That time right on the head pin and straight through. See, you mentioned Mike Pullen's name and people start throwing spread eagles. Let's see if he can make it. 
Dave Hodge had one a moment ago, couldn't convert. It's a thing of beauty when it happens. Nope, not going to happen. Eight box. And a 130. And a 443 triple. Dave Hodge now bowling out the string. Trying to break up the split and he ends up with a 710. Cannot pick up the spare. Get a break. <laughs> Trying to do a little Keith Lockhart conducting out there to get that one pin to spin around and take down the six, but it did not. I want to acknowledge a couple of the other emails that we got a fine a spare in the final frame. <laughs> got to throw it on the same lane. He was sliding over to lane 34. You got to throw it on the same lane since it's the tenth frame. Alice Tachi sent in a couple of emails. Frank from Fox Foxborough sent an email and a strike to close out. A nice finish for Dave Hodge, a 391 triple. He loses to John Winchell's 443. We'll come back to our talk to our bowlers right after this on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Well, on many occasions, a 391 would be a winning score, but unfortunately for Dave Hodge, it's on the short end. When you're up against the 443, that's a tough one. Very tough one. I mean, uh, this guy starts out 175, throws a triple. It kind of takes a lot out of you. I mean, I was telling myself, just to get two games left, battle back, and, you know, cut into it. And it was looking for the two strings. It was pretty nice. And then I just I went, you know, 9 for 10 on the head pin the last game. And we're seeing, you know, grandma's teeth everywhere. Split, split, split. <laughs> I mean, could do nothing about it. But you know, it was a great match, and he's a good bowler. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I am going to be back. That's all I can say. So now At the end of the second string, you were, you were getting closer. And then he threw a double at the end of the second string to kind of build a little, yeah. little bit of a cushion again. It's, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling, you know, bowling up a lead. It's tough, you know, you're playing catch-up. It's very difficult. And he, he was pretty much in, you know, cruise control almost up in first string. And, you know. Dave, when you bowled uh, earlier in the year to get into this position, uh, we'd commented that it looked as though you had worked on your game and you said you worked really hard last summer. What will you do or what do you need to do now to get to the next level for next season? Uh, well, I'm, I'm doing. I'm going to be bowling a little bit more this summer. I want to get a little bit strong. I'm inconsistent at times, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully something will change me. And, just uh, keeping up the good work and working hard, and that's about it, you know. You're a 24-year-old guy, or you will be in a couple of weeks yeah. already. You graduated from college. You've been in the bowling business as a proprietor. Uh, so what do, what do you look for in the future? What do you think uh, the future holds? Good-looking single women. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely <laughs> it. On the market now. Um, I don't know. I just want, I want to just keep it up. And eventually, these big scores will eventually be wins, hopefully. You know what I mean? It's tough throwing 390, 400, and losing, but... It's part of the bowling, and it's what makes you a better bowler. So. $250 is the runner-up check, $50 in bonus money. We'll see you again. Thank Dave you. Hodge, thank you Have very a great much. summer. Dave Hodge, our runner-up here this afternoon, and now to the bonus ball contest, and Mike will reach into the bin, which is really getting full, and at the end of the Tournament of Champions, we dump them all out, we start all over again, and then John will try to match it up. This is Yola Girardi of Arlington, Massachusetts. John, she wants you to get a seven. $70 in the jackpot. For Yola Girardi of Arlington, if John Winchell can roll a seven, let's see what he gets. It's a spread eagle. It's a four. It's a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. And John, come right between us. And congratulations Thank to you. Man. We have a pretty big payday for John. He has uh, $50 for having the highest string in the match, $150 in bonus money, and $625 for hitting the triple strike. That's a total of $825, and we've only just begun. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, I hope. I'd like to keep it going, but you never know. It could turn any second. We were kind of concerned uh, with the triple strike and all of the excitement if something might be happening over on the bench here because <laughs> we've got something coming along any day now. Yeah, my wife and I, uh, we're supposed to have our baby on Sunday, but he's holding off. I guess he's waiting for some better news. <laughs> well, uh, just so you know, we're boiling towels in the back in case uh, <laughs> we have to make a delivery, which will be a first on a bowling show, I do believe. 
Uh, it would be a first. Uh, yes, indeed. I hope you're ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> As a young child, you moved away uh, and lived in Iowa in the Midwest for a while, where, of course, there is no such thing as candle pins. Did you try 10-pin, and what did you think of it for that short period of your life? Uh, I bowled a little bit of 10-pin. I was still pretty young. I was only about, like, seven years old, so... It was okay for being a kid, but I really missed the game of candle pen, and I was so glad to move back because yeah. it just wasn't my game. Yeah, it's the big kid's game. Yeah. <laughs> you seem to lock onto the head pin really early on in the match. Yeah, you get lucky every once in a while. You just find that groove that works for you, and you don't have to try moving around on the lane much. Just stay nice and smooth, and you can stay right on it. What's going through your mind when you got the big lead? Is there anything? You, are you talking to yourself, trying to keep yourself in the match and not lose that lead that you got? Yeah, it's, it's kind of tough. You tend to tighten up a little bit and, and not throw it out there like you want to. But you got to still root for the other guy because, I mean, you see him on a regular basis, almost like weekly. So you still root for the other person, even though you don't want him to beat you. Well, you climb the ladder next week, and it's going to be Rich Lottie. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. You. John Winchell, our winner here today. this afternoon. Sure. A big payday for John, and we climb the ladder in the Tournament of Champions. Indeed, we're on our way to a final prize at the top of the ladder of $2,000. We're a few weeks away from that and some terrific bowlers in the next couple. Rich Lottie next up the ladder, and then Jeff Surrett, Gary Carrington, and Sean Baker. We'll look forward to seeing you next week when we continue with round two of the Tournament of Champions on WNDS-TV. For Mike Moore and our entire crew, I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching, everybody. And as everybody at Lita Lanes likes to remind you all the time...